Hi and welcome back to another video. We are here at the Intel OC lab in the US, Portland, uh, Oregon. We were actually here several years ago. Uh, so to me, everything looks still familiar. Some things changed, but overall, the OC lab is still the same, but there are very interesting things we're going to cover in also several videos. Today we will start about um, this specific setup, which is Intel 13th Gen. It's also an engineering board, which has very interesting features like a replaceable uh, like chipset and some very interesting debugging features. Then we will have at least two more videos also with an uh, Intel employee discussing very interesting topics like solder tim and some very specific information about temperature readouts and hotspots and everything. So yeah, stay tuned for these videos. But for today's video, we're, we will start with this platform and discuss what Intel can do here because they have so much more access than what you can imagine. And I can promise this is going to be very exciting. All right, we are starting with this board, which is called uh, the Reference Validation Platform. And it has some features that, or a lot of features that you cannot find on any kind of like normal production board. First of all, we can look at the socket area just for some like general introduction. Currently there is a 13900KS sitting under there, which we will look at in a second. It's a one DIM per channel board, which is also interesting because this is something you would typically only find on like high-end overclocking boards like an Apex for example but also Intel is experimenting about like finding very high memory clocks already for like early validation that's why they decided for this board only to have one DIM per channel. Right next to the CPU socket you cannot really see much of it but there's one connector which is the ITP so it's in target probe it's called and this allows direct access to the CPU. So you can read out a lot of additional values you usually cannot read out. You can program things you typically cannot program. We will look at this in, in a second. But first of all, some more, some more notes. I noticed that the heatsink is a gigabyte heatsink, which is quite interesting. Then I checked with them and at least they could tell me that when they make these kind of boards, they're designing them in-house, but it could be that the production was outsourced and Looking at the heatsink, I guess this could have been gigabyte production board. Apart from that, we have this one's a serial connector where you can track BIOS flashing. So whenever they're flashing the new BIOS, you can check line by line what's actually going on and see if something is like not going to plan, for example. You have this cable right here, which allows remote access to flash the BIOS. So even if somebody from a different team, let's say he's sitting in Israel or something, he wants to access the system and flash a BIOS for testing, then they can do that completely remotely, which is quite nice. The black box underneath the GPU allows to swap the PCH. So I guess we will be able to, to change to maybe a different chipset in a second. The thing underneath here with the LEDs is also remote access to power on, like power cycle, reset the system. It's actually the same thing you can find on the system right next to it. So it's like a direct control over a different uh, system. And this board, even though it's for 13th gen, is already older than a year, which tells you that they definitely, they spend a lot more time developing and testing these kind of boards or features before they actually come out to the market. I was talking about the ITP, which is the direct control over the CPU, over this cable from the side. And right now there is firmware running on the system, but it's just to show that something is actually running. So the system is running and alive. And if we switch over to this one, which is connected over this cable, we can enter ITP halt. This causes the system to freeze. So it looks like it froze like it looks like it was unstable or something, but that's not the case. It's just, it's, it just stopped. And uh, this could be useful for any kind of debugging to see what's going on now. They could change frequency on the CPU or whatever they wanted to do for whatever debugging reason. And if we go back to the system, you could also enter ITP go. And the system is back up running. So there's a lot of things they can do. A lot of things we unfortunately cannot show. So there's a lot more access they have to the CPU to change different parameters and stuff. But I think there's one more thing we can show. 
Obviously, during the testing, they are doing a lot more than just freezing the system. And uh, I asked them how many, like if there is like a hundred of things they could try and they said it's, it's thousands of knobs where they can like dive into the CPU and test very specific settings and see if it maybe helps to improve the CPU. And even though we have a 13th gen platform here as an example, I'm quite sure they're doing exactly the same for like the upcoming generation or the generation after that or already after that because obviously they're testing far ahead so they can once they have a CPU running dive all the way into the CPU test thousands of different parameters and see if there is a way to improve what's going on with this very specific CPU and there's one more thing which we can showcase apart from like freezing the system and that's the the VF curve table because uh, you might ask yourself how is it even like how does your cpu know what kind of voltage it needs for a specific clock and inside the cpu there is also a tiny amount of storage and there is a table where the vf values are set and they are tested during production so every single cpu during production is tested what kind of voltage it needs for a set frequency and once you have a CPU and you're running it, um, you can kind of access this. So if you're going to your BIOS, you can see the VF curve. But with this tool, you can like access this all the way down to every single individual core and see what kind of voltage does it need for what kind of frequency. And they cannot only read out this information, but they can also program new values. So if they want to try if they want to try a, a higher voltage or a lower voltage at a specific setting for a specific core, they can access this and write it into the CPU. So that's something we can check out. And that is the dream of every binner, basically, because you can access or you can read out the tested voltage from factory for all the different uh, cores at a different specific clock. So for example, with core one, you would have a voltage for 5.7 gigahertz of 1.362 volt. And then if we check for a different core, like core four, it needs a slightly higher voltage, so 1.374. And this way they can figure out which is like a better core with lower V-min or which one is a, like a worse core. And then they can read out all of this, which is very convenient for any kind of pre-binning for let's say extreme overclocking. And this is also the information they can read out. And as I said before, they can also change this. If they want to test something, they could also at least temporary then program this back in. Now we will quickly swap the chipset on this board, which is currently C790. And here we have a B760, which we can replace. So first of all, we use the screwdriver, simply unscrew the top part which is just, just an aluminum piece. And this center thing right here, which is basically a huge screw, applies the pressure, like all of this is like an aluminum part, applies the pressure to this, like basically a tiny heat sink. So you can see there's like um, some thermal paste or something underneath. And underneath that, there is the chipset. So in this case it was uh, C790. And this is just with just pure force pressed on this interposer. So it's not directly pressed onto the, the motherboard itself, but there is an interposer that makes contact with all the tiny BGAs. And you can see it's like the same pinout. That's why we can easily swap to B760. Put it in there, check. Put the tiny heatsink on top. And then with a torque screwdriver, tighten it down and it's done. And you can swap the chipset within just like a minute and just power it on. It will work exactly the same. You don't even have to flash the BIOS. So everything is the same. You can easily swap chipset this way and perform your testing. Now we are quickly looking at a software they've been using in the background. It's the same that we saw running in the back behind Fermark. It's called ROC, real-time overclocking. And it's kind of like a slim version of XTU. And personally, I would definitely prefer it over XTU. It's very intuitive. So if you want to overclock cores zero and one, for example, but also maybe six and seven, you can just, you can just select them, select the ratio you want to push to the CPU, then 
maybe set the active turbo ratio limit. You can adjust all kind of voltages, like adaptive or fixed. You can change all the cores to, let's say, 1.48. can see it's instantly applied. It's so intuitive and so quick and so lean, so clean. Very nice piece of software. Unfortunately, not available to the public. Not sure if that will ever change, but at least this is how Intel is internally overclocking the CPUs. Yeah, very nice. And they also called it the RAW Extreme Edition, which is also cool. Right next to the previous system, we spotted another reference board. This time not for overclocking, but it's also for validation of overclocking of a mobile CPU, which is also quite interesting. Right in here, we have a 3900HK. So a mobile CPU, which is theoretically overclockable. And obviously this also has to be tested. It's an interesting layout, so it's completely different from what you would expect on a, like a desktop board where you have the memory on the right, like the VRM on the left. Here is the complete opposite. Again, we have a card in the back that's for any kind of monitoring or like remote access. And I'm not sure if we can maybe ask them to remount the CPU love to see that but I guess we can just go into the system and see if we can maybe overclock that one. So we are on exact the same system with the 3900HK. We'll just quickly try if we can overclock the CPU with this software. Let's go from 49 to 51, 5.1 gigahertz. Straight applied. Also if we check monitoring, like the monitoring function, you can see it's a, I mean it's a rather high voltage also rather higher temperature, but I mean, still running. 5.3 on a mobile CPU. That's pretty insane. Five point four, it's also working. Five point five, okay. Even five point six. I'm just waiting for the system to crash, but even with the high temperature, this is amazing how five point seven wow. It just froze at six gigahertz, which, I mean, it's, it's a mobile CPU. The cooling solution on here is uh, far from being perfect, but I mean, it's, it's a mobile 3900 HK running at six gigahertz. That is, that is pretty insane. This is one of the 3900 HK that we just used or saw in, in the video hitting six gigahertz, which is uh, insane. And at least as far as I know, that is like the highest frequency so far on a mobile chip because recently a few months ago we were doing dry ice overclocking on a notebook and I mean we were struggling hitting like 5.6 with dry ice and here we just did like 6 gigahertz on like not a great air cooling solution so the 3900 HK it's insane how much higher this CPU can clock and just just mind-blowing the kind of like clocks we can see with these CPUs these days. And right next to me we have another board that's also for mobile testing but for the 3980HX which is also a very interesting CPU because it's, it's a mobile CPU but it's actually a desktop chip. So it's a desktop 3900K but adapted for mobile and uh, they're also validating this and doing testing doing overclocking optimization. And that's what's happening on this board. And this is also where we can see how the CPU is going to be mounted. This is this reference validation testing board. And for example, this would be a 3980HK CPU. As you can see, it's not using an LGA or it's not intended to be used in an LGA socket. It has a BGA on the bottom, which basically is exactly the same as what we talked about earlier with this tiny chip, a chipset mounting. It's the same way we have an interposer on top of the PCB and then just drop in the CPU carefully. 
make sure it's aligned and then it will just be pressed down by this heatsink which is I mean it's not going to have the, the biggest cooling capacity but for any kind of validation just to check if the, the general functions are working this will certainly do the job we have a negative pretty much milled in this acrylic piece on top which is then applying all the pressure onto the PCB to push it all the way down to make sure it has proper contact and then you can run it and then you can do exactly the same thing as what we showed previously with the chipset you can just swap it within minutes and then do all the validation and testing it's exactly the same concept with the 3900HK so that's pretty much the CPU we used for the 6 GHz it looks exactly the same again aboard with the interposer and then you press the CPU down with this cooling block right here so just a solid piece of copper again a piece of acrylic in front that will just make a uniform contact all the way on the PCB to press it all the way down to make contact between the interposer and all the BGAs. So that's it for the first part of our journey to the Intel OC lab and um, I'm quite excited to already talk about the, the upcoming videos we have already shot two more and I think we're going to shoot another one tomorrow so it should be a lot of content very interesting content coming up and already this with all the like different testing methods and different boards and like ways to to mount these CPUs and everything uh, was very nice to see so thanks again to Intel for having us to have the opportunity to show this like very open to the public and thanks again to Intel and stay tuned to see the other videos. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.